Good afternoon, and welcome to today's dedicated session for physician assistants. My name is Tani Kramer. I'm the director of strategic planning for Nefesh Benefesh. In addition to helping thousands of Olim make Aliyah every year, we believe that we have the tools to help the state of Israel find solutions for national challenges through our Olim while working together with our various partners. I believe that I speak on behalf of all Nefesh Benefesh when I say we are very excited and privileged to be part of the upcoming revolution with anticipated recognition of the physician assistant profession in Israel. I'd like to invite Rabbi Yoshua Fass, co-founder and executive director of Nefesh Benefesh to say a few words. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm gonna be doing it from here if that's okay. Um, there are a lot of familiar faces from last year, which is awesome to see. Um, Mr. Gelbart and I, over the last 20 years, have seen up close around 80,000 plus Olim Megalia. And each Ole has their own story. And as equally satisfying as it is to see milestones in the post Aliyah, it's extremely exciting and thrilling to see these moments where the thoughts of making Aliyah are germinated when those explorations happen. And what makes it even more impressive and more exciting is that last year, several of you sat in a room and really pleaded your case. Pleaded your case extremely well. And it put into motion a set of new laws. And then it passed the first reading, and then it was stunted. And then the government fell. And because of the clarion call and because of your charge, You've put things into motion that hopefully soon you'll hear how incredibly, incredibly motivating you were and how things actually came to fruition, which is kol to all of you. There is a chazal describe our relationship with Eretz Yisrael as tzipita liyushua. Tzipita comes from the word of tzofim. Tzofim are scouts. They run ahead, they canvass, they survey, they don't wait for fate, but they change their own destiny. And the fact that you didn't sit passively, but rather were the scouts running to the next hill, next mountain, surveying, canvassing, seeing what can be done, um, has allowed our government, this interesting government, this government, to really make the changes that are necessary. So I just want to welcome everyone here. It's remarkable to see just your... your your passion to not only your profession, but to your connectivity to Zionism and to Eretz Israel. And not only will you hopefully fulfill your own mission and your own dream of moving to Israel, but you'll pave the path for hundreds and thousands who want to follow in your footsteps. So I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Robert Fass. As mentioned previously, we are very lucky to have such dedicated partners in our mission to facilitate Aliyah and encourage Olim to move to Israel's frontiers. Since assuming office, Minister Vasilov has been a huge supporter of Aliyah in general and of Nefesh Benefesh specifically. I'd like to invite Minister Vasilov to say a few words. Asar b'vakasha. לעבור מהמחשבה לעלייה, למעשים, יש דרך ארוכה. וכשאתם נמצאים פה, אתם לקחתם את אותן מחשבות, שאיפות וחלומות, ואתם הופכים אותה למציאות. ועל כך הערכתנו, קודם כל. תודה רבה לכם. המקצוע שלכם, שמה שאתם עוסקים בו, עוזרי רופאים, הוא דבר שתופס לאט לאט אה, קורם עור וגידים בישראל. ועדכן אותי ידידי חבר הכנסת מיכאל ביטון, שכבר התחילו חקיקה בנושא, ואנחנו רוצים להביא לכך להכרה במדינת ישראל, כי זה הכרחי, זה חשוב לצמצום הפערים החברתיים. ואתם יודעים מה? אנחנו בפרשת השבוע. פרשת ויקרא, אז הנה אנחנו קוראים לכם לבוא לארץ ישראל, לבוא להתחבר לשורשים שלנו, לעסוק בהצלת חיים וכמובן לצמצם את הפערים החברתיים ולתת מענה הולם לאזרחי ישראל. שוב תודה רבה. תודה רבה כבוד השר. Over the course of the 20 years of our activity, 
We have had many supporters and enthusiastic friends who have supported Aliyah, but few have had the spark and passion that our next speaker has displayed over the years. Knesset member Michael Biton has been a dear friend of the organization ever since his days as mayor of Yerucham, through his various positions in the Israeli government, and now as the chairman of the Special Knesset Committee for the Development of the Negev and the Galil. Chavar Knesset Biton, please come share a few words. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Who is uh, holding the position of PS here? Show me your hands. Unbelievable. Sometimes when you ask if you have a hard problem, how you can solve it, what, what it means innovation. So people say maybe we should, you know, when they wanted to have the, the spaceship to the moon, they didn't know how to do the pen because you need gravity for the color to go down. They couldn't plan a pen. But Russian did pencil, just pencil. We have a problem in Israel. We have shortage of nurses, doctors, and professionals. And you have a solution. The PAs are high-level professionals that are doing the most complicated task in surgery room, and they can be a huge benefit to the Israeli system. The Israeli system did not recognize this professional over the years, but because it takes less years to train PAs and to get them into job, and less dependency of schools of medicine where they are packed and there is not enough seats for more doctors to be trained in Israel, actually, Sometimes more than half of the trained doctors in Israel are not trained in Israel. Some of them, a lot of them, are not trained in even states that are appropriate medicine learning. Lately we decided to close some of those states because we do not want to recognize doctors that came with this knowledge. We do recognize automatically the doctors from the states, because we know the level of medicine here. And what we need to do automatically is to recognize your professional and to bring it into our system. We started the process, the Nefesh Benefesh leadership created a process in the Knesset, in the parliament, where we already approved this law that will recognize Physician assistant, that's how it's called. And you have three votes in the Knesset. One vote, and then it goes back to the committee, and then second vote and third vote. After the first vote of this law, the government fall. So when you have a new Knesset, the government should agree that the previous vote can continue. It's called the continuation of the voting. The chairman of the health uh, committee in Israel, Uriel Busso, recognized this vote as a continuation voting, which means we might be able to bring it, God help us that government ex exists. You know, I'm from opposition and I pray for the government to exist. <laughs> Not too long, but a little bit until we make this law. Minister, we make this law and then we put you down. No. <laughs> No, I'm just you know, we, we work together. We are friends. He's the minister of Negev Galil. I'm the chairman of the committee of Negev Galil. So we know how to do good Zionist activism to Israel. No argues. But to finalize, our dream and our vision to work with Nefesh Benefesh and you as professional, that soon enough, your professional will be recognized in Israel and we can start let you coming, making Aliyah and implementing your, your dream with your professional. You don't need to, to change your professional. This is also helping Israel in another problem. We are opening new hospitals, one in the Negev, one in the north. We are building those hospitals. And what happened when we finished, we, build it, we just built an hospital in Ashdod, and there is not enough professionals. So hospital taking 
the professionals to each other. The same professionals are moving. There is no added value. We don't need holes. We don't need buildings. We need human capital. You are the human capital. We're going to work on it. I'm committed to promote it in the parliament, in the Knesset, and I will do it with the government. And hopefully we might be able over the next year to bring some positive final decision to this issue. Thank you very much. Israel's Ministry of Aliyah and Integration is a valued, a valued and instrumental partner of Nefesh Benefesh. Our next speaker, Avichai Kahana, the newly, direct, the newly appointed Director General of the Ministry, recited when he first met Nefesh Benefesh, I've heard a lot about Nefesh Benefesh. You guys do great work, but I'm going to challenge you even more. True partners never let you stay static. They always push you to excel. It's my honor to call Avichai Kahana to please say a few words. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, there is not much to say after after the um, uh, after Michael Beaton and uh, and the minister uh, Vasserloff uh, said. You know, when you ha when we have consensus uh, between the coalition and the opposition, uh, we should uh, we should continue in this path. And uh, I will just want to say to you that in our ministry we see a big uh, a big challenge. To, uh, to solve bureaucracy uh, problems that you might have when you will come to Israel. And uh, our ministry will be your address uh, to those problems. And uh, the one thing that I want to say to you is uh, that uh, in Israel you need to be patient, but you need to be also stubborn. And uh, I'm sure that uh, people like you that uh, hold this uh, profession, uh, and that most of the time in Israel, I think that can uh, that can decide if someone is uh, alive or dead. You also can decide if uh, someone. Okay, so you, so you will survive also the Israeli bureaucracy, but uh, but our um, uh, challenge in the ministry is to be your address um, when you will land in Israel. You will come to our offices. Uh, and and you will ask uh, for for the for the things that we can provide to you, and I hope that uh, it will be uh, helpful. Um, meantime, I think that is a big challenge to you. How many of you have a good Hebrew? Okay, so that's not enough. Uh, and I think that um, until you go uh, and you'll do the Aliyah. Um, you should uh, practice your Hebrew if you need help. We, when I came to the ministry, they told me that uh, we don't give uh, solutions of Hebrew uh, vouchers or something like this till you're coming to Israel. And uh, I said that we need to change uh, this uh, decision and we will provide help with, uh, with lessons of Hebrew, uh, even uh, uh, when you're in your uh, homeland till, uh, till uh, it's Israel. Uh, and uh, and, I, and we'll, we'll t talk with Nefesh Benefesh how we can provide it to you, because when you'll come to Israel and, you, and, and uh, Bezrat Hashem, the, the act will pass uh, in the third role and, and you can, uh, and you can um, practice your profession, you'll need a better Hebrew uh, to start work. Uh, and uh, and uh, I encourage you to, to start working on, uh, on this too. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you in Israel. I hope it will be soon. And, uh, and um, thank you very much to Nefesh and Nefesh uh, for all the good work that they are doing. As you said, we see you as partners. Uh, we hope that our partnership will grow even more and more in the next... I, I, I'm sure, I'm not hoping. I'm sure that, that our partnership will, will grow in the, in the next years. And, um, and thank you very much. Dear colleagues, my name is Alon Smolalski, and I'm the Vice Chairman of the Israeli Physician Assistant Association. I would like to take this opportunity to express our enthusiasm about the prospect of welcoming and integrating substantial numbers of American PAs into the Israeli healthcare system. The physician assistant profession is relatively new in Israel, and I myself graduated with the first class of Israeli educated PAs in 2016. 
Presently, there are around 100 PAs working in emergency departments throughout the country. Although that is still a relatively small number of clinicians, they have proven themselves beyond the shadow of a doubt and demonstrated the highest level of professionalism. The impact Israeli PAs have made in this short period has been remarkable, and it has been noticed and acknowledged at the highest levels by all the medical professionals they have worked with. The Israeli Ministry of Health, together with the Israeli PA Association, has prepared and submitted a bill to define and recognize the profession. I'm happy and proud to say that the first motion of this important legislation was accepted by the Knesset last year. We are hopeful that this law will quickly go through the next motions and will be enacted in the near future. Without a doubt, the introduction of PAs is having a dramatic effect in Israel, improving the accessibility and quality of medical care for the entire population in all geographic areas. As the system begins to understand the importance of this profession, the need for quality, experienced, highly educated PAs will be felt more widely. We are looking forward to welcoming many American physician assistants who will, I am certain, find motivating, challenging, and rewarding employment in Israel. Israel will strongly benefit from your impressive knowledge, experience, and dedication. Good luck and shalom to you all. It's hard to believe that it's been a year since 25 U.S.-based PAs gathered around the table with Deputy Director General of Israel's Health Ministry, Dr. Sefi Mendelovich, and then Chairman, Chairwoman of the Knesset's Health Committee, Edith Silman, to discuss the physician assistant profession with them. I think it's safe to say that all those present in the room felt a special connection and a feeling that a historical process was beginning. At the end of the two and a half hour meeting, Dr. Mendelovich promised that he will continue to update as to its progress. When he heard about Medex 2023, he was very adamant in personally arriving to, his, uh, arriving to deliver his PA updates. Without further ado, Dr. Mendelovich, please. Okay, hi, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> so three things, I'm very sincere, very non-formal, and very practical. So this conversation will be sincere, non-formal, and practical. And at the end, we'll have Q&A, of course. Uh, so I'm here, I really, it's really a great privilege uh, to be here. Uh, I know that many of you uh, drove many hours, uh, so really thank you. Um, I think that it's very important, when I come back to Israel and, said, and we'll say that so many PAs came uh, to meet us, I think it gives us a lot of strength. Um, and let's be practical. So I just want to update you what happened. But beginning, but I would like to start because I think it's a very profound conversation to give you like a macro um, lecture about the Israeli health system and what we're facing and how the PAs, the involvement of the PAs in the Israeli medical system is so crucial. Okay, so what is happening we are facing a severe shortage of physicians in Israel in the next years. Israel, unfortunately, didn't have the ability to forecast the need for physician in the last year. We had the great miracle in the 90s where we had the big, the huge immigration for the former Soviet Union. And Israel didn't understand and anticipate what is going to happen in the... 2000 and, and around 2020. And Israel had, it's almost unbelievable, until four years ago, only about 800 places for medical students in Israel. And what we have done, Israel, and not proud of it, we have sent our dear children to learn medicine in, in universities around the globe. Some of them are very good. Some of them are less good. Some of them about 400 of them, between 350 to 400 of them, went to medical schools, which we don't believe in. Uh, I must be, I told you, be very sincere. And in 2019, 2018, 2019, um, a really unbelievable person, his name is Professor Shaul Yatsiv, some of, the, some of you know him. He is really an admired person, who went all over Eastern Europe and Ukraine and Russia and did a certification for the medical school. He had a very, very, it was very, very um, 
it was like an accreditation. He had a very, very uh, specific demands, certain clinical fields, uh, certain hours. And what have happened that he disqualified a lot of medical schools in Moldova, in Armenia, in the Ukraine, in a lot of places. And since it was, this law was passed in 2019, and usually it takes about seven years to be qualified, to, to learn six years as a physician and another year of internship, in 2026, for the first time, we're going to face a severe lack of physician because, if I can recollect, they finished learning or didn't start learning in 2019. And we are about to see a reduction of 400 physicians a year. The major problem is that these 400 are not allocated equally around Israel. They are mostly located in the periphery, in the southern part of Israel and in the northern part of Israel. Actually, in certain hospitals in Israel, I don't want to, to name them, you'll find that up to 70%, 70% of the residents are graduate of these universities, which had been disqualified in 2019. So the managers of this hospital are facing, I would say, almost a tragedy. I would say it's like a, an operation, a very painful but needed operation. In the beginning, it was very hard, but we are about to save the Israeli medical system because really these physicians had a very, very, very low standard. By saying this, I'm saying some people suggested me that these people will become PAs and are refused automatically because now we are building the benchmark of PAs in Israel. And the PAs will be the cutting edge of medical personnel. You don't want to do like a second degree people. It could be a great relief. It could be a great solution. There are a lot of pressure regarding these students, but no. PAs, and it's very important for me to say, are the cutting edge of the Israeli medical system. And you have a great, great, great importance in this process, and I'll, I'll elaborate. This is the number of doctors in Israel. Okay, so it's, of course, we're measuring it by uh, 1,000. Never, never works, this technology. Anyway, this is Israel, okay? You see, this is Israel. We're not in a good place. Already now, we are in a very low place, according to the OECD, and we're going to face a dramatic fall in 2026. Now, what we're doing? In the last four years, we've raised dramatically the number of medical students from, in four years, from 800 to 1,200, and we are keep raising it. But as you all know, it takes time, both to make PAs, but also to make MDs. So we'll see the benefits of this process only, I would say, at around 2029, 2030. So we're doing, we're, we're doing many, many, many acts, but all of these acts will take time and none one act is enough. For example, we're working combinedly with Nefesh Benefesh to bring MDs from United States and hopefully we start bringing MDs from all over the world. But the PAs are gonna be a part and a crucial part of the solution and I would say that even if we didn't have any problem with physicians, we still needed PA because as you can see, and I was here in the States, you see that PAs in the American system, whether there are there is a lack of doctors or there isn't, are such has a, such a crucial part of the system. It's unbelievable. And until I didn't see it, until I didn't see it, I didn't realize. And actually, if I can tell you a personal story, so uh, uh, Professor Yatsiv, uh, who is this distinguished a professor, he was a little bit sick in one of the Nefesh Benefesh conference. He was treated by very professional people. And then in the middle of the treatment, he understood that all of them were PAs. And then for the first time he said, oh my God, okay, now I understand what PA means. So what we are doing now? So as my, my former fellows said, we were very, very, very uh, decisive about passing the legislation. I must say, it was, it's almost hilarious. It was in the night when the Knesset fall, and we passed this first, it's this, like the first call. And I think the coalition and the opposition were not ready, you know, they, they didn't almost vote on any law, but on the PA was consensus. 
and they voted when we passed the first call. Otherwise, we had to do the whole process again, and it was a great relief. I was there, I was there in the Knesset to make sure the call will pass, and now what will happen? Just now we have to pass the second and the third and the third call. Meanwhile, the t- there's not a waste of time, because now, meanwhile, it's the professional work when the people, my people in the Ministry of Health and the people uh, of the Knesset, the the... Uh, the law people, etc., are working together to build, to build the law because we are creating a new profession in Israel. It's been tens of years that a new profession in Israel was made, and the PAs were about to do it. Actually, now we're about to change the name of the PAs from Ozerofe, from PAs. As I was writing, it's Physician Associate. We want to call it, uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to call it Amitei, Amitei, Amitei Rofe. Um, this is the name. Yeah, this was based on last year's conversation. Okay, you were telling me about the process you were you were doing here, and and this is this is uh, where we are we are heading. So, what we are doing now? Okay, so this is the Yetziv I spoke to you about. Just one one graph, which is amazing because I see you as a partner. Okay, it's not just a lecture. I want you to understand what we are facing. So I'm sorry, I'm without the microphone, but. Okay, so this is just a piece of history about Israel medical system. So this is around the years. This is, okay, this is graduate of Israel. Okay, this is graduate of medical school abroad. United States, England, Hungary, etc. This is, this gray one is graduate of universities which will be disqualified, which were disqualified in 2019, okay? In the beginning, we didn't send, but in the last years, you can see this gray area, it's huge area. It's, it's almost third of the Israeli graduate medical school. Now, I guess you understand what is this? This is the immigrants from the former Soviet Union. Now, what will happen, see, in 2026, there will be a huge fall in the number of physicians. And this is where we're pointing. So, little, little structure. Let's be very practical, what we're aiming. Okay, so uh, after the conversation here, after studying it very thoroughly, we decided that the model, because there, are, I don't know if you know, but there are several models of PAs around the world, we are embracing the North American model, okay, which is very important, and especially it's important for you, okay, which means the people which are highly, highly educated and have a very vast uh, of, of authorities. Um, I must say, it, it was the, the, the blessing of the Israeli PA, it's, it's great, and it's great that they're embra- embracing you, but we are learning from the mistakes of what happened with them, because they, the PAs now are graduates of only like a first degree, they are paramedics, and they're not working via a law, okay? They're, vo- vo- they're working with very, very, very limited authorities, and it's not the North American model, and we have a lot of problem with this. What we'll do, I must tell you, with the Israeli PAs, that after we'll pass the law, they'll have to do a course, and they'll have their authorities, like the PAs, only in the ER. Whereas the certified PAs, like you, we can, we can work whatever they want. This would be the difference. But I think we, maybe we should elaborate it later. Okay, so PA can perform almost any me- medical procedure. For now, we're passing legislation. So for example, we will write that a PA cannot do a surgery by himself. And if I recollect, also recollect, uh, that's what I was told also uh, last year. I think it's I think it's very reasonable, and there are also certain limitations. But this this is the main this is the main issue. And my friends, it's not easy because, as you know, Israel is very very conservative. Okay, and and explaining this, people cannot understand, cannot what is PA in the states. Only being here, going to the best hospitals and see how it works, it needs certain of imagination. But we are very, very uh, stubborn. People are trying you know, to tell, no, give them less. No, we want the North American model. 
and we are building it for years. And if it will take two more months to convince, so it will take two more months, but it will be like the Northern American model. Uh, so PA can perform any medical, almost any medical procedure under the supervision and authorization of a specialized doctor. The doctor will determine which procedure the PA is authorized to perform uh, in accordance with their capabilities and experience, employment in hospital and in community clinics. Uh, I must tell you, promise to be sincere, uh, I think that in a community, uh, um, PAs will need to work alongside a doctor, not in the same room, but they won't be uh, independent clinics for PAs. Meanwhile, for at least, okay? Not at this stage. Um, okay, PA in Israel, okay. The first PA, you, okay? We'll be leading the field, building and establish core patterns for the future and explain, elaborate later. Uh, diverse employment possibilities, I'll elaborate later, and growing the young generation of the Israeli trained PAs. So what we are heading now? A committee, so there are two tracks. First of all, we are now finishing the legislation and preparing it for the second and third calls. It's being done mainly on the same day, but it needs a lot of preparation. And the second thing, which is not less important, is the, the, it's, called, it's called the Council for Higher Education. They are in charge of the curriculum of the universities. We have established a very, very elite committee. I did it, I, I cannot appoint it because I'm not a member of the council, but we advise the council to appoint this, uh, this committee. And they are deciding regarding the curriculum, not of the American PAs, but the Israeli PAs. And in the beginning, they didn't understand. They are like, like very, very admirable professors, and they didn't understand what we were speaking about, the Northern American model. And gradually, they understood. They learned what is happening in the States. And Baruch Hashem, they embraced the North American model. And in May, two months from now, they're about to give uh, their, their uh, proposal. And it will be very close to what is happening in the States. It will be a master degree. Uh, it's like between two to two and a half years. It's two years, but in the, in, in the States mainly, it's two years with the semester of the summer. So it's more or less the same. And also it will be very close to what is happening. If you are a graduate of biology or a pre-med, sometimes you'll have to add like two courses. Sometimes you can go directly. And, and hopefully, if nothing changes, we'll start the first training in two universities in March, one year from now, in the, in the, spring, in the spring semester, hopefully, two universities. Uh, we also insisted, as I was saying to you, that, that we are very, very stubborn to make a very high standards. All the colleges want to make a PA tracks, but we insisted that in the meanwhile, PA will be open only uh, where they are affiliated to medical schools. So we have six medical schools, so we'll start, uh, two universities now are into it, and I'm sure that it will be, you know, it will be scaled very, very fastly. This is the graph, so. This is, we are now, okay. This is initials of Malag, the High Council, okay, they are about uh, to plead on, on May. During 2023, we'll pass the legislation. I cannot promise you on which months. I think that in three months, we'll be ready to do it. I'm, I'm trying to be very practical, not saying two months, but I, think, I, I, hope, I hope three months. Sometimes it takes time. Democracy, it's okay. And, and, and for March 2024, we'll start educating the new PAs. Since it's two two and a half year program, we'll see them only more or less January 27. So, why you are so important? For two reasons. Once the legislation will be passed and will fix the salary, okay? You can just come, we're waiting for you, and I'll tell you where we're waiting for you. We'll speak about the periphery. But it's not only this, because the Aliyah 
from the North America is very, it's crucial for two reasons. To keep a very, very high standards of PA because people in Israel, the medical system doesn't know what is PA. Once we'll get the highly educated, the highly skilled PAs, people will see what they are facing. And they say, oh my God, it's amazing. I can leave the department, he can, he can manage the department. So this is one reason. The second reason, we start to train them. Now in the first year, it will be academic year. It will be only theoretical studies. But on the second year, which I mean it will be on I'm just March 25, I don't know, February 25, April 20, 25, they will start their clerkship, their clinical uh, education. And there, we needed people who have done this all their life to teach them, to see people. Okay, I can do it. It's possible. Of course, it won't only be built on PAs, on American PAs, but also on physicians. But someone has to show the physicians what, what is PA and what are the standards. So, so I think it's really, it's historical to, to be able to be a part of a revolution in the, in the Israeli health care system. Now, regarding our need, our need, and this is also, also it's your note, and also I think it would be, um, I think, I don't know if it'd be easier for you, but I think it would be very, very, uh, um, um, I think it would be very thrilling or you will feel very important to go mainly to the places. The, the whole very long lecture I gave to you about this reform is because in the periphery, every hand, it's crucial. The hospitals, mainly the hospitals, also the community, but mainly the hospitals, because these people are mainly resident in the, in the hospitals, they won't have physician to work with. And I could see how you can make a major difference. And what we'll try, I don't know if it's good news for you, but what we'll try, that to give, to fund the, pa the, the places mainly in the periphery, in the beginning. Uh, because I think this is uh, this is our our obligation to to these places, uh, and and also what we are planning is not like I'm just showing you. No one knows it. Okay, <laughs> my my plan is like to do a tender to hospitals and say, okay, we'll have we are distributing I don't know 30 places. The people who get these places, it's not how much the hospital is rich or poor or needed. No. The hospitals that will give the best the, the best place to nurture the PAs. A lot of uh, uh, authorities there uh, that will embrace them. And this is how we can make sure, okay, that the Israeli healthcare system will embrace successfully the new PAs in Israel. Um, so if I'm not wrong, this is the last slide. Uh, I, th I thank you. And now we are here to Q&A because I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Please, uh, you were first. Uh, first you, you, oh, okay, you have a microphone, okay. Okay, first of all, I'm almost brought to tears by this. I made Aliyah 15 months ago, knowing that I couldn't practice medicine after practicing for almost 30 years. I'm doing the quintessential thing of working in a medical high tech <laughs> um, because I needed to pivot and I come back here every two, three months to see patients because that's my love and also to be able to pay the bills. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is prescriptive privileges. Um, I think that without that, we will be tremendously constrained, and I wanted to hear your comment on yeah. that. And then I have two or three follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prescriptive. There won't be any problem. Okay, who is going to be teaching these PA students? That's what I was talking about. Both. I don't know how I mean, many. The PAs. didactic, not not during the rotations. The didactic portion. Oh, the didactic. Um, first of all, I must admit, uh, it's not only my decision, okay? It's the university's decision. I think it will be very important that PAs also will teach them. 
Okay. okay. I agree. It's, it's very, it's very reasonable. I also they, they need, they need to believe, they need to see someone like them and to believe it's possible. 100%. You mentioned PAs working in, in the hospitals. I think you said specifically emergency rooms. And no, 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 no. within the community? No, 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 no. Now the PAs, okay. I'm sorry for right. um, interrupting. No. Now the Israeli PA model is only in emergency room because it was built upon paramedics who used to work in the Israeli Red Cross. The next PAs can work with wherever they want. So you mentioned within the community. I, and you said that they would not be able to really be autonomous, they would be alongside a physician. I want to really get into the nitty gritty of that because mm -hmm. as a PA, I come here to Rafua Health Center in Muncie. I have my own patients, my own panel. Oftentimes there isn't a physician there. That's the way that it works out. And if there is somebody there, I wave to them in the hallway and I keep going. Well, how do you really foresee the, um, including the PA within the practice in a community-based practice? Okay, so <clears throat> usually, first of all, my apologies. When I speak in English, I always, I always uh, feel that my IQ is, you know, is, has a reduction of 40 points, so I'm sorry. It w won't be very intelligent, okay, <laughs> my answer. But, but there, there are two, two reasons. First of all, I'm always like taking the, in certain moves I'm doing, I'm, I'm feeling I'm taking the Israeli medical system to the edge and pushing him, but the places you know where you are being pushing too hard. Pushing the medical system to give PAs to work, to open their own clinic, will be, will be, will be, will be too much. So can you? No, so I don't mean opening your own clinic. I mean seeing your own patients. Of, yes. Your own patients. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. I, think, I, think, I think it's fine, yeah. But, but, but along, alongside, listen, not, not all the things I saw here, I liked, I must tell you. Uh, I think that uh, in the periphery of the states, you also have a periphery. Um, clinics r running only by PAs, where only formally an MD, okay, puts his nose formally and says, okay, okay, there is an MD. I don't think it's giving the best medicine to the patients. And this is my responsibility, to give the best medicine to the patients. So there is a great difference between seeing your patient and running clinic, uh, cl clinical, clinical, your own clinic. You're welcome. Please. Two questions, please. <clears throat> one regarding one regarding the uh, prescription privileges. Um, here in America, many of us have DEA licenses and can prescribe anything and everything that a doctor can prescribe. Will that be also in Israel that will be able to pres pre uh, prescribe opiates and other narco narcotics in general? So I can tell you, meanwhile, as we're passing the legislation, the Almost the only thing that, meanwhile, we have, we have a great debate on this, but the position of the Ministry of Health, I can, I can tell to you, because o not only the doctors are conservative, also uh, a lot of people are conservative, even they are not practicing medicine. It's only regarding doing uh, your own, uh, the only thing that will be r written in the law that you are not allowed to do surgery by yourself or to do like, I don't know, cardiac catheterization. There will be nothing about not prescribing certain prescription. Meanwhile, okay? Now, I think, as I can see it, a PA, as you taught me, not in his first months can prescribe um, narcotics. But I think that a PA that works and getting his specialization in this issue can write a prescription in, in narcotics. So, so I think we, we see eye to eye in these right. issues. Many of us work in surgery or other aspects, and we, do, we discharge the patients, so we're required to give them their pain medication. You know, regimen. Yeah, I, 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 th I think it's fine. As long as you're being qualified and being trained. So I think it's fine. I, I must tell you, it's very funny because as a physician, I'm a pediatric emergency physician, no one qualified me. They were, you know, I was just pushed into the water. No one told you, you can do this, you can do that. I just started. I think that the act of the PA is much more responsible than what they're doing to, to doctors in Israel. So as long as you have a certain qualification and knowledge, you can do, you can do everything. Is there a, a narcotics license that, like we have here to prescribe? No, 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 only, no, no, only cannabis, no.
So because the legislation is not passed yet, I know you don't have a definite answer, but for this seems to be moving a little bit on a fast track. Everybody's hoping that by a year from now, and it takes time to get paperwork together, it takes time to get things processed. Is there anything you can tell us to start getting ready now that you're pretty sure we're going to need to then start putting our packets together? Because it takes a while. This is really exciting, your question. Okay, so really, it's really, it's really, it's, you know, there's not many times in your life you are feeling you are a part of a history. I think it's a part of it, make, not only improving profoundly the medical system, but giving the option of a great people to do Aliyah. I think it's a, it's a really, it's, you know, as a son of a Holocaust survivor, I think it's, a, it's the best thing I can do. So regarding your question, uh, since we are working side by side with Nefesh Benefesh, uh, what I'm hoping, and I know that they will debrief you as we are passing the things. I'm not feeling comfortable to say, okay, eh, listen, take my word, three months from now. I don't know. There are two main things I think you should know. First, when we'll pass the second and third, and, 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 and I'm really optimistic about this, okay? Um, and, and the second, I think you should know your salary, Okay. I think it's a crucial, crucial, and, 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 and I can tell you, I don't know what will be the salary. And if even, even I would known, I'm not allowed to say because I'm now starting a negotiation with the, the man who is in charge on the salary in, in the government, but really, I don't know. But we're aiming, okay, to a salary, distinguished salary, okay? I, I don't know how to be, I'm, I can't tell you, it for certainly won't be the salary that the PAs now in the ER are getting, which is very low. Yeah, it's you know it's 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 not reasonable. We are building on people who that that will be their work for their life. They will come. They make aliyah. So I don't know. I cannot promise. Okay. Anyway, you should know in a public system in Israel, you're not making millions. Everyone know there are you know benefits and pros and cons. But but we are working as much as we can to do to to give a distinguished salary. So these are the two reasons. And I promise, once we'll know, okay. Uh, uh, regarding these two issues, you'll be updated immediately. Um, I just like to recommend on the Nevis Benefit website, if you search for PAs, there's a sign up sheet where you can sign up to get updates about everything happening in the PA world through Nevis Benefit. Every time there's an important update, we will send out to anybody who registered on that landing page. And we'll also send it out to Adina, who's been great. Job for the, to, to anybody who hasn't signed up yet. Can you also do an automatic for everybody who signed up in the session? Like, that yeah, we'll add it. Not a problem. You signed up with the email, right? Please. Has the committee considered clerkships in America during the clerkship year? I think it will be too expensive and too complicated. Let's see. If you want, if you want real experience. What? 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 what Maybe what we are planning is to take a delegation. Okay, I was offered by a dear, there are some great people here in the audience. Okay, we were working with last year to 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 go with a delegation uh, from medical leaders to the states to see how it works. I think it's it's much more efficient than sending the people to 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 teach you. It's very complicated to do a clerkship outside outside of Israel. Um, I guess side by side and, and gradually also we'll do it, we'll do specialization, but it's not our main course now. I have a question. <laughs> the, the PAs. He's the boss, I must answer, okay. The PAs, the PAs who are in Israel uh, in the ER, correct? Where did they get their education? They are paramedics with the first degree, and they did a course over several months, eight months. Uh, this is where they got their education. It's not close to the no. new model. Regarding the question about uh, uh, give prescription, they are meanwhile not allowed to give prescription. There is a great debate. Okay, whether, because there isn't a law and there is a special committee, it's very, very problematic. And also, I must share with you, there are conflict with the nurses. And our, our actually, the places I've been in the States, I, I didn't face any conflict, but I don't know, it's, but, okay. 
Uh, but but uh, nothing's perfect, I know. But 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 our agreement with the nurses, what they're saying now, there are problem with the law. Our agreement with the nurses, I'm not. Sure, it won't be. It won't be smooth as I imagine. I know. But once there'll be a law and everything will be very clear, okay, things are supposed to work out. Please. I have a question. First of all, did you solve it in advance with the different uh, labor organizations to accept this professional? And second, in, there is a new hospital coming in the next five, seven years in the south. Do you have different uh, manpower model of a hospital that in advance will define position for PAs in advance as the structure of the Minister of Health for hospital? Okay, so these are two good questions. The, regarding your first question, uh, not like many years, the union, the, the medical union is supporting, actually supporting profoundly the physician associate initiative actually he wants and we are wondering what is best for you he wants to embrace the union of the PAs inside the medical union I don't know if it's, if it's in your best interest but they are supporting and it's a great change why because they understood okay that uh, they were afraid all the years that uh, the Ministry of Treasury will put PA instead of a doctors what they Baruch Hashem understood now the problem won't be the places. The problem that you won't have doctors. So and 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 the second of all, doctors want PA. They read, they understand what is the value. So regarding your question, regarding the nurses, there is silence. Meanwhile, I'm sure. You see, I'm, I promise you, I'll be very sincere. <laughs> there is silence. Meanwhile, I'm sure that toward the end of the legislation, we'll have some problem, but we'll overcome them. And we are speaking. Um, regarding your second question, yes, of course, we are now, actually now I'm, I'm taking charge of, of a committee with, which uh, responsible how uh, to allocate or how to plan the new medical personnel in the, in the new hospitals, both in the south and both in the north. And of course, I think it should be, I can say it should be based on PAs, but B, PAs should be a, a profound uh, part of, of this of this I can give you an example of another thing we have Yosefthal hospital Yosefthal hospital is in Eilat what I was telling the director general of Klalit Klalit you know it's the biggest HMO it's on, also owns about 38% of the hospital in Israel in, it owns Yosefthal and they have a very very complicated model in, in Yosefthal they are budgeting uh, young doctors to work three years there and then to come and have a residency in the center of Israel I told them listen it's not working. It's not good, good medicine. Yosefthal should be based on PAs. You're taking people highly, highly, highly skilled, educated, and you put them in a lot, or you're even taking people which were raised and born in a lot. Okay, very skilled. You are training them. You are budgeting them. You are sending them to learn PA. And you are working, it's a very, it's a very small community hospital, but it's, it's actually, it's great working there because you have a lot of action. It's like, it's a very far in the periphery. And, and you have like few, very few limited uh, senior doctors which work collaboratively with the PAs. So I think that it will take time that the medical system will know how to work with this new thing called PA. So regarding your question, we are, we are really building on this. So I have a question, but embedded with some comments. PAs here are very proud to be PAs because it's a profession of excellence. And yes, as PAs make their way through their profession, they become more skilled, more independent. But the initial training and ongoing training always requires collaboration with the physician on some level, whether they're there in the clinic, like you're saying, or that you can access them over the phone. And that's what I think I would see the North American PA model, and that's what I would advocate for. That's what I see. I'm wondering if there's any sort of ongoing certification that you have in mind for your PAs as they go along their trajectory of their profession. Like right here, we have certain requirements in continuing education. And also, my worst days, to be honest, which is probably a 180 of what you expect me to say, and I'm very grateful for all your comments and your vision, my worst days are sort of the way you described maybe your early residency. When you're thrown into a situation that you don't think you're able to provide the best care for the patient, 
I don't like being bored either, but those aren't my worst days. My worst days are when there is not enough supervision mm -hmm. or help or when I feel that my, my uh, skill set is being overextended in an unhealthy way. So can you speak to that in terms of certification? Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, all your questions are very good. So regarding the first question, is actually you're wondering about this. On one hand, you see the course of training physician in Israel is not perfect. It's far from being perfect. I don't know if you know, we don't have a, what we are calling a CME, continual medical education. Doctors are in Israel are above the law. Okay, once you are... I'm just kidding, yeah? Once you are qualified... As a doctor, no one checks what about you, okay? Another very funny thing, you know, I'm doing once a year annually, I have to give to my uh, employees, uh, I have to sit with them and to give them, you were bad, you were good, etc. I have like uh, 25 divisions under me. Now, I have like 18 are being run by non-physician and seven are by physicians. According to the agreements, physicians are not doing the annually uh, uh, interview. So I cannot, because they are above the law, they're perfect. So I'm only doing for, for <laughs> so, so you see, it's, it's ridiculous, of course, yes? Um, of course, of course, it's terrible. We'll change it one day. It's a matter of, of working with the union, it's very complicated. Uh, so, so we were wondering, because I, I want to take the PA case and make it how you are being preparing thoroughly a, a, a new, a new uh, position in Israel. It's CM, it's continuous medical education, it's authorization, authorization by certain stages. And, and, and the magic is to do it on one hand, very professional one thoroughly, on the other hand, not to do it, uh, uh, it's, it's in Israel, it's hell for the physician. Okay, it's very bureaucracy. So it's how to do it very efficient, very smoothly. So I think that we should do it. Uh, the question is whether we should give the autonomy to the places, to the hospital, to the HMOs. But I think we're, we're speaking on the same page regarding this. And the other thing, I think that I said already, what you're saying, that not like physician that you're just being thrown into the water, in the case of PAs, I think it will be much more you know, tailor-made. He will tell you, okay, if you are, I don't know, I'm a pediat pediatrician, okay, so on the first half a year, you cannot do an LP, okay, lumbar puncture, okay, when I was in the first, my first shift, just do an LP, okay, or, or, or central line. So I think that's why PA will be very more gradual and no one will throw you, though, you know, it's an Israel climate and, you know, see one, do one, teach, you know, see one, do one, teach one, this is the... But, but yeah, but we are, we are on the same page. I mean, there's so much data to support having PAs. I would want us to be set up as a profession for success. I wouldn't want any bad stories, incidents. Like here, there's a lot of data supporting improving patient care, improving patient outcomes. I don't know how the Israel system works if you set up that type of research with a brand new profession to make sure that they're meeting their... You know, no, but, but in Israel, we are perfect. We don't have any medical errors. We, I don't know. I don't know what we're speaking about. No, no. No, no, it's a different conversation, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, please, uh, because they haven't asked questions, okay? I'm not sure how, how, if you can answer this, and I don't know anything about uh, Israeli government. Uh, since this is a new profession, um, and if this passes, or rather when this passes, um, how sure can we be that 5, 10, 15 years down the line, that this is still be a safe career. This will be something that's not uh, like disbanded, or uh, or is it once it's set, then it's good. Knowing the Israeli climate, I don't think you know they cannot be they cannot disqualified a profession which was profoundly organized. They cannot do a reduction in the salary. I want to add something. All this process is to solve a problem. And we are in a huge shortage of medical manpower. So no one will start something that trained people two years and after four years will, will hurt this uh, process. I believe over the years it's going to get more respect 
status in the Israeli society. In the beginning, people will question because they are not used to that position. We didn't have paramedic many years. Maybe in the 80s we started paramedic. So, you know, we bring new professional, but over the years it will have better status in the beginning. And, and, and regarding to the member question, the he was saying you should know that paramedics of course it's it's a profession but actually le logically it's not a profession they don't have an an id number whereas the pas on your first day of work you'll have a number a certification number like doctors okay like other professions now we are we are trying to to finish legislation regarding the paramedics so that they also can be called officially a profession uh, he was first yeah Thank you. Hi. So uh, I want to deal with the silent opposition of nurses who I love working alongside mm -hmm. with. But here they have a profession who, if they want, they go back to school and they become nurse practitioners. So is there something like that in Israel? Uh, or will they be uh, kind of thrown into the PA track if they want to practice uh, alongside the physician? Okay. So it's also a good question. So first of all, in Israel, we have the NPs, nurse practitioner. We now have seven specialities of nurse practitioner, among them neonatology, uh, geriatrics, uh, surgery, palliative care, etc. Et and we are expanding. Um, so one of the, 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 the main issue, so one, one can ask, listen, why, why do you want PAs? Except for bringing you back home. Um, just send nurses to learn to be nurse practitioner because it's not very far away, the, the, the certification. But anyway, we have a severe lack of nurses in Israel. Whereas in PA, as I was saying, there are thousands of people who learn biology. For example, we're working in a pharmaceutical, in a private sector. We want them in the public sector. Nurses, they, they don't have so many. So what we're calling the substrat, it's, it's very low for this. I can see... I can see in the in the tracks. I could see. I can imagine a class of I don't know 40 people. I would assume that uh, just I'm just guessing. Eight of them, ten of them will be nurses who decided that they want you know they want, they want to have more authorities. So so they decide not to become an NP but to become to become a PA. Uh, I don't know if I answer your your question. Uh, Thank you. Welcome. Are, are nurses now? Uh, Licenses in the, US, in the United States recognized in Israel, nurse practitioners. Uh, it's it's quite complicated. Um, yeah, it's complicated. You'll have an easier track, I promise you. Um, who, who didn't answer? Yeah, but I want people who didn't ask questions. So please. So let's say. People, uh, some of us here want to make Aliyah in the next, All of you want to make Aliyah. <laughs> next several years. As licensed physician assistants in America, have, what would we have to do in order to become practicing physician assistants in Israel? Do we have to take um, boards? Do we have to take some classes, courses? What, what, I'm, what we are aiming for is like an MD in the States is not doesn't have to... to they're like, they're, it's very, very... It's a very distinguished law, but if you work certain time or something like this and you have been passing the American boards and we believe in the standards of, of the states, so you don't have to do a new boards. This is, this is I, I cannot promise you every detail, but this is, you know, the main, the main idea. Yeah, our goal is basically to create a medex, what you just saw happening here today, for PAs. What, what happens now is physicians come and they meet with the representatives of the Ministry of Health and they go th and they show their they go through the licensing process here before they make Aliyah because it's already recognized. All they have to do is show their paperwork. They don't have to go through any tests. The ideal is hopefully we're able to work it out together with uh, with the Ministry of Health. Is that PAs as well because they, they want to copy the American model. It doesn't make sense that you we want to take you and you want to you set the bar but then you have to be tested. Yeah, I, I think that the more, and, and actually your question raised me some, some ideas, the more complicated question, the more profound question is not about being certified as a PA in Israel, but I'm working in, I don't know, I'm intensive care, in PQ, in pediatric intensive care for 10 years, I know everything, okay, that's for sure, I'll, I'll make Aliyah, I'll, I'll have my, my number, but 
back in the States, I did everything. I put the central line, I did incubation, I did everything. What will happen to me in Israel? I still don't have an answer, but we, what we're aiming is to give the hospitals or the community the ability to decide. Okay, so if everything will work out, they, they'll explain to us, okay, listen, one, two, three, he's been doing it for 10 years, etc. So, but, you know, it, it will take time. We, we should all know this. Another question? Please. Um, so I, I work on the uh, inpatient side of the hospital. And uh, what I see as a PA is an extension of the residence. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated 12 years ago, there was a PA residency at Hopkins, which I did for one year. And I basically worked alongside of residents. So my question is, is there any sort of thought of just integrating PA into the residency? They're over they're overseen by physicians and um, essentially what you end up getting is um, you know over the years you get a lot of experience so you get a very efficient resident uh, who is the PA and is overseen by the doctor but you know when you start it takes you two hours mm -hmm. to figure out how to mm -hmm. do something and once you have experience it takes you 20 minutes to do something so for example in my profession I see consults in mm -hmm. the hospital, so the residents are able to operate. They don't have to step out of the OR, or they're in clinic. They don't have to step out of the OR, and I can see those patients in the emergency room and other um, parts of the hospital. And so this allows the residents to keep learning, of course. and it allows patients to be seen, and it just it becomes a very efficient model, and you're o overseen because you're actually working alongside of residents. You're overseen by the attending physicians who eventually sign off on your notes and your discussions. Yeah, so it's also a great question. There is a great difference. One thing, of course, also I can see eye with eye with you. The only difference is unfortunately the track of educating residents in Israel it's not, is not as regulated as in the States. In the States, everyone are starting in one day, finishing in one day. They told me, you know, three years in advance when you'll have a night shift. Everything is, you know, is, is, is by the hour. In Israel, as I was saying in the beginning, just, just throwing you into the water and manage. So I think it will be very close, like working as residents, very close as working residents. And speaking about residents, how I sell people, like medical leaders in Israel, and we used to work in the medical field, I'm telling you, remember when there's always like, you know, the most knowledgeable, practical resident you have just before he's finishing, he's qualified, he runs your department, he knows everything, and he's modest enough when he doesn't know to come and ask a question. This is how I sell the PAs. They will, you know, they will do the job. The, the, the great question in Israel, because I... I when I was here last year, I saw it's it's very deeply in, in your mentality that you know the borders of your knowledge and you're very proud of what you're doing and you know what you don't know. In Israel, we have a problem. We know our borders. <laughs> and I think that's why you're so important, okay, to put some uh, humbleness to educate people and it's which is not a shame to say I don't know. No, last last Monday I was in a shift, and I was treating, I was treating a baby. I was I was um, I was I was suturing uh, his nose. He had a very complicated. And I told I started. I said I said the parents, listen, I don't think I'll do it good enough. I, I want to call ENT. And he told me, it's the first time a doctor tells me that he's not going to do something good enough. So I think it's, it's a part of your Israeli, Israeli mentality. So I think that uh, also, I think uh, you're aiming in the right direction. And maybe by putting you also will improve the resident uh, education. Well, I think also like when residents come in, they basically don't, you know, it's the first year they just started. So when you get a consult, you go see with them. So you're really teaching them. By the time they're fourth, fifth year, they teach teaching you. Uh, I'll finish by, we need you to educate the educators. Once you'll go to the department, you say, listen, 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 I don't know enough. Please, I want to come with a resident. 
that's how we'll know how to how to embrace the, the PAs in Israel.